Inflation harms us all. When inflation is high, our cost of living increases and everyone suffers. Even if your wage increases, it often will not increase by the same amount as inflation, especially when you factor in taxes. Thus, controlling inflation is vitally important. In Australia, this is the responsibility of the Reserve Bank. The Reserve Bank Board bears the ultimate responsibility for controlling inflation by setting interest rates. The Reserve Bank Board ultimately is overseeing how the Reserve Bank operates in addition to the interest rate setting. Now, this is a technical area. It requires skill, expertise, and knowledge. It requires training, years of training, years of experience. It's not something you pick up overnight. It's not something you pick up on a whim. It's not something you pick up just by being able to add. Merely having a view about inflation or a view about fiscal or monetary policy doesn't qualify you to be on the Reserve Bank Board. You need to understand the fundamental concepts. It's often highly mathematical. The ALP, however, has decided that some of this might not in fact be necessary. They've decided that union representatives might in fact have that requisite knowledge. They've decided that union representatives should be on the Reserve Bank Board. Now let's evaluate this. I'm an associate professor of finance. I have a PhD in finance. I've published more than 35 peer-reviewed finance articles. So this is something I'm quite familiar with. And I thought I would give you my assessment based on my expertise in this area. And my assessment is not good. I don't think the ALP knows what it is doing in this context. Now to see why, we need to think about what the RBA actually does. Well, RBA does multiple things, one of which is setting interest rates. Now, RBA decisions are incredibly complex. The RBA must engage in complex economic modeling. They must consider inflation models, GDP models, employment models. These are all statistically complex. They're often highly mathematical. They're often highly technical. There's often theoretical modeling underlying the statistical model. To be able to set policy, you need to at least have a basic understanding of this. You need to have grappled with it over multiple years so you have an intuition for how various things will affect inflation and therefore for how your interest rate decisions will ultimately help to drive inflation down. These are not something that you can just do because you can add. Just being familiar with the idea of inflation, just being interested in inflation, just being interested in finance or economics doesn't qualify you to understand those statistical models or to really be able to set inflation policy. So let's think about this. Do we seriously think our average union representative is actually financially literate, especially our average union leader? That's a political position. They're often going to be highly partisan, often highly politically engaged. These are not going to be non-partisan, unbiased decision makers. They're going to be partisan and often not very experienced, oftentimes with a degree of a Dunning-Kruger effect. That is, they think that because they can add and they vaguely know what inflation is, they therefore are qualified to set interest rates. They manifestly don't. Do we think, for example, that a union representative or a union leader really knows what a stock is, how to value it, what short selling is, what a bond is, how to value a bond, how bond prices move, the impact of interest rates on bond prices, what a yield curve is, the various parts of the yield curve? Do we think they know anything about that? Do we think they know what quantitative easing is, what quantitative tightening is? Do we think they understand financial market microstructure? Do we think they understand any of this? Then we have the question about statistics. Well, to be on the RBA board, you at least need to understand the basics of statistical modeling. You need to be able to understand where an inflation forecast is coming from. After all, predicting what inflation will do is vital to setting interest rates. And part of that is going to be statistical. So for example, do you think your average union leader or union representative, do we think they actually know how to run an ordinary least squares regression, much less a vector order regression? Do we think they know fundamental concepts such as a spline or an autoregression or what a structural model is? Have they studied these deeply or at all? If they once studied it, have they used it any time recently? Are they actually familiar with any of these things? Are they familiar with any of inflation modeling? Familiar with any of economic modeling? Familiar with any of these statistical techniques? And therefore, do we think they can actually make an informed decision about what to do with interest rates? It beggars belief they would get people onto the RBA board that manifestly don't know what they are doing. It's like putting someone onto a corporate board who simply doesn't know anything about cash flows. Or it's like going in for surgery when your surgeon has never actually studied medicine. In either case, you're going to get a bad result. It's absolutely mind boggling that the ALP thinks this is actually a good idea. They're putting unqualified people onto one of our most important boards in Australia. It is very, very strange and very weird. But with the ALP, it appears they've become perhaps beholden to the unions. The question is then, if the union representative doesn't bring statistical or finance or economics knowledge to the board, or really know anything about monetary policy, do they bring other skills or knowledge that might be useful? Well, the answer to that is, well, basically no. 
the skills and knowledge and training and background of a union representative is completely irrelevant to monetary policy. Monetary policy involves using interest rates and some other tools to bring inflation down while also considering the unemployment rate. The things that the union representative might be doing, for example, what their workers are getting paid, for example, their workers are concerned about their employer, it's completely irrelevant to monetary policy. It's just not at all relevant. There's no relationship between that and setting interest rates, like none. And the only thing a union representative might do here is make decisions worse, because they might be more partisan, more political, more likely to just go along with what the ALP wants, and in particular if the ALP is in government and the ALP wants lower interest rates, well the union representative is more likely to advocate for those even if it isn't good policy. In essence, you're going to have someone on the board that doesn't know what they are doing and is more likely to actually make things worse and doesn't bring any additional skills or expertise to help to offset that lack of actual knowledge. Putting the union representative onto the board is not actually going to make anything better. Now, the RBA might not have made perfect decisions in the past. This is given with hindsight. After all, in hindsight, we can tell what worked and what didn't work. However, we need to assess the RBA based on the decisions they made at the time and compare that to what could have been the case otherwise. I, we need to look at what information they had right then and whether given the information that they had, they made a decent decision. Now, this is a highly technical area. And if skilled individuals have difficulty making decisions about interest rates, imagine how much worse it would be if someone didn't understand the basic models. Imagine how much worse it would be if you've got an untrained, unqualified person making these interest rate decisions. It is obviously going to be significantly worse than if you have someone who actually understands what is going on. And if the person who understands what is going on is struggling, and perhaps in hindsight the decisions weren't perfect, how much worse do we think it would actually be? We can just look at Turkey, for example, to see how much worse it might be. In Turkey, they took the unconventional policy of keeping interest rates incredibly low and inflation reached 80%. Now, if one wants inflation at 80%, we'll bring the union representatives onto the board. But if you want inflation back down under control, then maybe get people who actually know what they're doing on the RBA board. Now, unfortunately, the ALP seems to have shown little interest in understanding basic financial economics. And this isn't just with the RBA board, although that is a major symptom of it. It's also the case with the superannuation tax grab. The decision in 2023 to increase taxes on superannuation was mind-bogglingly bad. And one of the worst parts of it, which was often underreported, was that they're going to tax unrealized capital gains. That's pernicious and sets a terrible precedent and is appalling economics in this context. But the ALP pushed ahead anyway. If you go back to 2019, the ALP pushed ahead with their boneheaded housing policies, which ultimately would have made things worse if the ALP was elected. However, fortunately, they weren't elected, and then ultimately their housing policies didn't come to fruition. However, the ALP seems to be intent on repeating some of the mistakes that they've made, seems to be intent on making the RBA worse with union representatives. And unfortunately, as a result of this, we are all likely to suffer when the ALP makes the RBA worse and makes the RBA more partisan.